I did some optimizations in my theater after Top Gun Maverick with regards to how I use lens memory settings and shifts and all of that with my JVC projector for different aspect ratios and wanted to give an update. So a little while back from this video, I made a few pieces of content for the channel talking about projector installation modes, lens memory settings with my JVC NX7, particularly with regards to my Control 4 setup and using Kaleidoscape and Apple TV and all of that with sources. There's a few of those, so go check those out. But at the time, I only had some settings specifically earmarked for specifically 16, 16 by 9 and less types of aspect ratios and another for 240 to 1. And I found that that was a little bit incomplete, particularly with the Kaleidoscape, because Kaleidoscape really identifies three main different aspect ratios that you may want to adjust and shift and use different lens memories for. There's 16.9, which covers 4.3 and anything, again, kind of like smaller than that. And then there's 235 and 240, which are kind of both grouped together in this ultra wide, ultra wide single aspect ratio. But in between there is 185 to 1. And so if you put a 185 to 1 movie up on a 16 by 9 zoom mode, you're going to have some black space at the top and bottom. You can get a little bit more out of it. And I think it's worth having actually multiple steps of installation lens memories for those different aspect ratio steps kind of in between and then you can very specifically choose the ones you want based on the piece of content that you have in the case of kaleidoscape with the triggers and control 4 it'll just automatically put the projector into the right mode without me even having to do anything other than press play on the movie itself the other thing that i find that i found was a little bit of a shortcoming with regards to my prior lens memory settings had to do specifically with Top Gun Maverick and the idea of these movies that have shifting aspect ratios. There's not that many of them, but Top Gun did. And so when we watched Top Gun, we watched it essentially zoomed from my old 16.9 setting, which gave up a little bit of space for 185 to 1 and put the ultra wide portions of the movie very small or much smaller anyway in the middle of the screen. What I did to account for this was enabled the ability, uh, another memory setting that employed some of the masking features of the projector to be able to zoom larger and actually cut off some of the lower portion or the higher portion of the movie as it makes sense for a given piece of content and essentially take away the suddenness and the disjointedness of those shifting aspect ratios when you have an ultra wide setup. I think this works a lot better. I really wish I would have done this before we watched Top Gun. But in any case, let's take a look at what the settings specifically are, how I set them up, and kind of uh, basically lay, laid them out. And then another tip as well, something else I realized that was available in the Anthem processor to kind of improve using the zoom up and the installation modes and lens memory settings. Okay, so here's my, my scope screen. It feels a little bit further away because I've got the, the camera set to be able to catch when we zoom this in a little bit. Of course, this is the main kaleidoscape ui we're set right now in a 16 9 zoom mode aspect ratio the main ui or the ui of the kaleidoscape is set to actually render itself in 16 by 9 so if i take a look at the projector menus and i look at the third setting over again this is a jvc nx7 installation modes and i look at the mode select i actually defined five different lens memories so lens memory one i, I named as 178 that's basically again 16.9 you would use this for anything 16.9 4.3 main ui menus there's really not a whole lot of specialness to this there is no masking being employed in the 16.9 mode there's no anamorphic the screen setting and the theater optimizer is all set for the size of the screen that's effectively being rendered it's set to auto aspect ratio. I'm not using any extra zoom. This is a JVC projector. It actually has 4,096 pixels of width instead of the regular 4K 3840. And so there, there are times, and in these, many, in these settings, I do actually employ the zoom because I don't have the throw distance to completely fill my screen. But in the 16.9 mode, of course, we're not using any of that. The main thing that I really wanted to get in here was the 185 mode. So if I go ahead and zoom to 185, 
we can see it gets a little bit bigger, it shifts a little bit up, and if the aspect ratio of the piece of content was 185, it ends up getting you know a couple, another few inches or so of screen size out of it. There's no reason to watch a 185 movie in the 16.9 space and, and give that up when it's just so easy to do it like this. And with Kaleidoscape and Control 4, 185 is one of the aspect ratios that c content is tagged at. It'll send the, the trigger cue to the Control 4 system and 10, 15 seconds later, we get a little bit of that extra screen real estate. We still have black you know, or unused screen to the far left and the far right of the image, but you know, we're fully taking advantage of the vertical space that's available on the screen. And as it is, it might be hard to detect uh, through the recording this way, but there is a little bit of overspill going into the velvet of the screen, kind of on the top and the bottom. Of course, that's because the menu is still 16.9 size and we did just zoom it up a little bit. But for an actual piece of movie content, it, it wouldn't do that. It would be lined up very exactly with the top and the bottom of the screen edges. So if we go back and just take a look at this installation mode, again, we have no masking. The screen setting is a little larger this time because the effective screen size has gotten bigger for 16.9. So from a theater optimizer perspective, you do want to increase the screen size. JVC only has granularity of 10 inches in their screen size. I'm not a big fan of that. I wish it was more like five inches or so, but it is what it is. And again, here we have aspect ratio set to auto. There's no zooming. So now let's go to the 235 setting. We're gonna zoom in a lot more. There's a little bit of a shift up tick there. It's loading some other settings that are gonna come out of this one and we'll notice a few other things happen and in the settings themselves. These lens memories take a little bit of time to load in the, the JVC firmware. Unfortunately for a lot of it, you end up sitting in the dark. I really wish that they would improve that, but it is what it is. So here's 235. Notice here, there's no masking in this one. This is kind of a pure scope setting. Um, in the screen setting itself, I've bumped it up to 150 because we, again, we've zoomed up the effective image of the display that much bigger. And I did enable the zooming, the aspect ratio zooming here. We're off of auto and we're now into zoom, which takes advantage of those extra wide pixels, pops the a little more of the space of the vertical as well. And I'm only on the left side, maybe I've got about three inches of space uh, beyond the, the movie covers that are cut off there. And of course, same for the right because I've got the image balanced in the center of the screen. So I'm getting close. I'm getting close to filling my screen. If I had an NZ9 I, with employing the zoom, I probably would actually be able to do it. It is what it is, and that's a very expensive projector. One of the things that I might consider doing in the shorter term, actually, and I, I, I sent a message to my friend and installer, Dan DiCarlo at AudioVision, is that Seymour lets you buy custom size masks. And I don't know how long it'll be before I may ever realistically have an NZ9 in this room. So this might be what I'm looking at for quite a while to come. I think I might go ahead and buy or have made, uh, provided they're really not that expensive, I would guess maybe $100 or $200 or so. But if I can get masks made to cover up the little remainder of the far left and the far right, I think that would be pretty cool and would, would lock it down at least from a, a width perspective for fully zoomed in scope movies. Yeah, 69 and 185. I don't want to buy three different types of, of masks where I got to change them, but I probably would be interested to buy these and leave them up all the time and, and velvet out essentially the, the little remainders on the far left and the far right. But as it is, this screen is so large, we sit 14 feet back. Your, your field of view and what you're looking at, you don't notice the, the unused screen space. And with the JVC and its black levels and all of that, it stays, stays pretty dark. This is a setting that I could use for any kind of just general 235, 240, ultra wide scope movie. And, and it would be great. There's not really a need to mask or any of that. However, if I were to zoom up for something like Top Gun, this is the problem where you would have information, picture information 
above and below the actual screen space. And I don't know how much of it renders here, but if I look at the cover in the middle of say Ford versus Ferrari, I can see down and I can see the top of the next layer of covers on the curtains, even below the border of the screen. And up above the top of the cover of, of Trolls, the, the crossbar of the T or Transformers there, the trans of the Transformers, and a little bit more information is above the screen in the velvet. So you wouldn't want to watch, you might want to zoom in for a shifting aspect ratio movie like Top Gun, but it's really not great to watch it this way because when they go to the IMAX aspect ratio scenes, you would have that information kind of thrown off the top and the bottom of your screen, which is why I went ahead and made a variation of the 235, which I called 235 mask. And again, I hope this is kind of rendering in what you're able to view, but the main difference or the only difference between these two settings and the reason why it was able to change so fast there is all I've done is add a mask. And so the top mask I've got set there at 34, the bottom mask is set at 111, and I see no more overspill. So the top of the trolls, the trans and transformers, the very top of Venom's head, it's gone. It's been masked out by the masking features inside the projector. That light throw is basically being blocked to the very top edge of my screen. And the same thing on the bottom. The masking on the bottom has been brought up to the very bottom edge of the screen itself. No more overspill. And when you watch a movie now, like Top Gun, in this aspect ratio, or in this lens memory setting, it's now pretty ideal. Because you get the extra wide blow up of the, of the scope portions of the movie. And you still get a little extra vertical information for the 185 portions of the movie without as much of a jarring effect, without a smaller image, say, in the center of the movie itself. And so from a kaleidoscape triggering perspective, this is what I have it go to, this setting for any type of 235, 240 aspect ratio content. It just goes to the mask, and I don't have to worry about what's shifting aspect ratio or not. And then the last one that I put in here, I called it 235 subs. If I switch to this one, what this one is for, notice how we're moving up now. And we took the, I basically took the mask off. What this is, is for movies and content that I might watch that's in scope aspect ratio, where the subtitles are not specifically within the image of the, the picture information itself. And particularly the one that I faced this with was watching The Boys on Amazon Prime on the Apple TV. There's a character that doesn't talk, she signs, and Amazon in that app, on that device, puts the subtitles at the very bottom of the picture image, halfway and then halfway down into the black space down below. So if, I, if I'm if i knowingly watching a piece of content, particularly in this case, only really a piece of streaming content, and there are four subtitles that I, I need to be able to read to enjoy the content, I can come to this lens setting and still get as big of a picture as possible as I can this time anchoring the picture information at the top of the screen whereas in the other 235 uh, lens memory settings here I'm actually anchoring the picture to the bottom of the screen and putting the dead space at the top this puts the dead space at the bottom in order to make room for those subtitles and so my screen size setting is 150 I'm still employing the zoom and as I watch more content in streaming, I may find I have to come in and tweak this one a little bit, might have to like zoom it down or move it up a little bit more uh, de depending on the content. But this is a very specific one and I would only use this one in a manual way, not particularly with the Kaleidoscape because again, the Kaleidoscape is gonna go to this masked variant all the time on its own. And one of the reasons we can do that, of course, is because Kaleidoscape in its settings of the specific player allows us to do subtitle repositioning. Always reposition subtitles within the movie image. This is an awesome feature, very handy, pretty much required. Now the one thing that I haven't done and I had some trouble trying to do this was now, now we actually have kind of the Kaleidoscape UI 
in an ultra wide version or zoomed up ultra wide version with the masking, it looks like it's the right thing, but it's really not. We're actually cutting off some of the KUI and you can see that when I bring certain things up, I can't see all the menu options and whatnot that's available here on the bottom left. I have started to play with that. I wasn't able to get it working completely right, but Kaleidoscape does allow you to put the UI into a scope aspect ratio. And I do plan to do that, and I'll do a separate video talking about how I did it, how I made the settings, and, and all of that uh, in the future. So look for that coming at some point. In any case, there's one other thing that I wanted to call attention to with regards to these zoom modes. Notice I have an Anthem AVM70. It has the UI overlay for the volume, tells us what input we're on, tells us the resolution and refresh rate that we're seeing. Where it says no signal, that would be the audio codec that's being played. Dolby Atmos or whatever it might be and then our volume currently set there to minus 40 as I'm changing it just to keep it up on the screen Normally normally this little pop-up UI would be at the very bottom um, of a 16 by 9 image and what I found was happening with it was with the default settings the majority at least two-thirds of this pop-up was being cut off it was below the bottom edge of the screen in the zoom modes and so I, I could still see what volume I was setting to, but it was showing up on the velvet, uh, the velvet flock of the uh, screen frame, which isn't really ideal. But I discovered that in the Anthem settings, there actually is an option to denote uh, two, two choices, essentially. Wh where do you want the uh, pop-up UI to be relative to your type of screen? So I was able to choose the ultra-wide setting and all it does really is it just moves it up by a, a certain percentage they did a great job with it as you can see where it's popping up is a couple inches above the bottom of the screen this is perfect awesome great anthem feature and if you if you have uh, an anthem product or maybe another processor receiver you might be able to do this with that device as well so check that out if you're if your pop-up ui information um, isn't on your screen there could be a setting that allows you to do that. So this is just absolutely fantastic now. I've got things locked, anchored, reset, and masked out where they needed to be masked. I, I, I did a whole rerun of all of my all of my lens settings with regards to you know focus, shift, and, and all of that. I've got everything lined up perfectly with the bottom and the top edges of the screen. Just sweet, just awesome. And so if you're, you don't have a video processor and you have this kind of setup, I strongly, strongly recommend that you get familiar with these types of settings and these types of features of your projector and your system and all of that. And if you don't have Kaleidoscape, you don't have Control 4, that's fine. I think you can still accomplish all of this stuff a little more manually, even if you just have to grab the projector remote. I can't really see that, but even if you just have to grab the projector remote, in order to make those changes, you know, you're going to do it once per movie. Sit down and watch a two, two and a half hour movie. It's worth setting this stuff up, getting it right, getting it balanced. So I'll say thanks to Pixel Pusher, Andy on AVS, a local uh, Michigan home theater enthusiast and fan, Chris Deering, a couple of the other folks. It gave me the inclination to go check out the zoom modes, check out the masking, uh, and, and figure out how all of these different settings and pieces and that work together to arrive at a system configuration that's like this. I think it would still be pretty awesome to get my hands on a Lumigen or a Mad VR and be able to tinker with a device that would do some of this stuff automatically <laughs> without having to e even have the programming, have the, have the triggers and all that, and be able to fill in some of those different aspect ratios in between. I know on the Kscape Owners Forum, folks have been asking, can we get more delineation of aspect ratios instead of it going from 185 to 235 can, can we get a 2.0 you know or, or some of those in-betweens can we maybe get a 235 and a 240 if the, if there's a differentiation because in a lot of these projectors in the JVC in particular there's 10 memory settings and so what's the difference really if you're using three of them you know or eight of them to be very very specific I'd rather have as many as we can have very exact aspect ratios mapped over to a specific set of zoom settings and lens memory settings that are that are very technically uh, accurate to the picture information that's going on the screen so you never have overspill or underspill 
or, or any of that. So we'll see how that goes in the future. But sound off in the comments if you've got questions, a different projector or something. I, I'm happy to answer any questions about this. If you're doing something similar to this as well and have some other lessons learned, share it in the comments for other people to see. Thanks so much for watching. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share the video. If you'd like to support the channel, you've got super thanks. You've got merchandise. You've got Amazon affiliate links, channel memberships, all of that stuff down in the description below. I talk a lot about Kaleidoscape on this channel. If that's something of interest to you, note I do have a referral code for them. Kicks me back a few dollars of movie store credit. Always add into my Kaleidoscape movie collection. So I am, I am humble, uh, humbly thankful for any support that you might like to show for the channel. Thanks so much for watching and coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.